All right, so uh, listen up. Tonight's episode, episode 386, going to be a... So we're supposed to be talking about the Athletics Astros, right? The Athletics Series and the one game uh, against the Astros that took place tonight. Um, But I really don't want to talk about all that right now. I just got home. I'm tired. And I was going to talk about, again, the Athletics Series. But... The, the loss against the Astros tonight just kind of like makes it a little redundant to even summarize that all and discuss it and break everything down. Instead, uh, I'm going to just give a, a quick little piece on my thoughts on the Yankees after, after tonight's loss. And um, from there, after I give my two cents, we are going to get into the three-month progress reports. Uh, you know how we do a progress report on this Yankees team every month. We did one after April. We did one after the first two months. And now we're doing one after the first three months. Um, so we're going to get to that right after I give my two cents on, on what, where I think this Yankees team is as far as being a legitimate title contender. And keep in mind that when I recorded this upcoming portion of the show, uh, handing out progress reports and stuff, that was recorded earlier today. Earlier on Thursday, June 30th. Okay. So the stats that I give out are one game late. They don't include this Astros game, which had not happened yet at the time. So when we get to that, just keep that in mind that those those report cards or those progress reports, whatever you want to call it, are um, were handed out before tonight's game. That was I recorded that earlier today, Thursday, June 30th. Um, but yeah, the Yankees lost, um, and we're going to talk about it. So let's get to it. Episode three, 86 of BD4. This is RJ Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. Oh, hang on the rope. He shook up the world again. And show some dexterity as well with the left hand. It's on its way! There it goes! And the Yankees are going to win! What's happening, everybody? What is going on? Episode 386 of BD4. I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and my eyes are red because I'm tired. Um, Hope you're all having a good night. I was having a good night until I found out the Yankees lost. Um, I was at work, and I was listening to the start of the game. Then my phone died, so I couldn't get the rest of the game until I got home. But by the time I got home, the game was already over. And they lost. But we're going to talk about all that. As I said at the top of the show before the intro, this is going to be mostly the progress reports, uh, breakdown of each Yankee season and stuff like that. You know, the usual after every month. But just really quickly, real briefly, I want want to discuss this Yankees team, the state of everything and where they are. Um, Just because I want to get some things clear. So I, I kind of took a break this week on, on, on Facebook, right? I, <laughs> I wasn't ranting as much as I had been uh, weeks prior. But, and I, you know, I did say, I did say after that initial Astros series, the four games set at, at Yankee Stadium, that the Yankees going 14-5 and five since that Minnesota series up to the Houston series and splitting that Houston series um I did say if they did that, which they did exactly that, I would buy in. Uh And I guess I kind of regret saying that. Not that I think they're not good. Not that I don't think the Yankees can win a title. But just seeing them play the Astros, man, I got to tell you, like, I can't just buy in. I can't. I can't just say 
I know I said that, but I can't just follow through to just because I said that. If you want me to give my legitimate thoughts, I'm going to give my legitimate thoughts. This is coming from pure, at literal logic. Like, I'm just giving you what I feel. This is not off my emotions. This is not being angry at tonight's game. But if you're asking me right now who I think the best team in baseball is, sure, the easy answer to say is the Yankees. Excuse me, right? They are... 56 and 21 even after the loss they're 56 and 21 which is an absurd record still playing over 700 baseball they have the best record in baseball over the Astros by six games seven games now um I think it went from eight to seven after tonight's loss so yeah I get it they've beaten a bunch of good teams even after everybody was saying beat good teams beat good teams they did that um but just, it continues to be the Astros that are the thorn in the Yankees' side. And, again, I am giving you my thoughts. This is my opinion. This is not me, again, being emotional. So please remember that. This is literal, this is just this raw feeling. And I, and I just feel like the Houston Astros have the Yankees' number. They have beaten the Yankees each time they faced them in the postseason since 2015, which I think was actually the first time they faced because they were in the NL before that. Um, so the Yankees are 0-3 in, in series versus the Astros in the postseason. And in each and every one of those years they lost to the Astros in the postseason, they also lost the season series too. Now, take that as you may, but... The point being, this Yankees team has a history of being inferior whenever they play the Astros. And you wanted to see it this year. So far, and, and it's, they have two more games, I believe, left against them before the playoffs. Late July. You wanted to see, though, this season, the Yankees at least show proof. At least give you some kind of encouraging indicator that they could handle this Astros team. And that they could beat them. And you wanted at least one or two of those games to be a pretty comfortable win. It's it's not looking that way right now, folks. I mean, I, let's see. I have it up here on my phone. I took a... Uh, I gotta fucking find it. But, I mean, I just off the top of my head, they, they got no hit for one game. They scored one run. So they scored one run in the first game. Until they... No, they didn't score. I mean, you know what? Let me pull it up because I, I I saved a note just describing how how much of a struggle it, it, it has been. Okay. In game one of the Astros this season, the first game of that four-game set, the Yankees were no-hit through two uh, to eight innings. So from innings, no, inning number two all the way to the eighth inning, they were no-hit through the eighth inning. Game two... That was the one run off of Verlander game. And I don't, think, I don't even... Was it off him? But they scored one run the entire game. So they had no hits for a whole while after that first inning in the first game. They only scored one run in the second game. Game three was obviously the infamous no-hitter. All right? The combined no-hitter. Game four, they were no-hit for the first six-plus innings. They didn't get a hit until the seventh. Game five which the fifth game against them tonight in Houston, they only were able to muster up one run. The only two wins they have were walk-offs, right? The The second walk-off was only possible because the Astros didn't have their top relievers available. Tonight's loss, the Astros were missing two of their top hitters in Brantley and Alvarez, who's a beast and they were pitching some uh, another nobody who nobody knows uh, I'm going to get a lot of shit for that if I get any <laughs> Astros fans listening uh, I don't even know the name Garcia dominates him so the Yankees are struggling to even win against the Astros their wins have to be tooth and nail fight 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 um and the Astros have had plenty of leads in these games. And the Astros have shown they're capable of, again, beating the Yankees historically. So if you're asking me to buy in, my question for you is, is what do you have to, to convince me? Like, what's different this time around for me to say that I think they can beat them this time? 
What what changes that? That's my legitimate question because you can't give me the well. They're having a ridiculous season. They won 103 games in 2019, right? And then they lost to them. So you can't really give me that, all right? Even if they're on pace to win 115, whatever it is, you can't give me that. That's not enough because I don't care about regular season win totals. We've seen it so much in baseball. We've seen it so much in sports. The Phoenix Suns just won 64 games and they were. They were pathetic uh, in, in the later postseason rounds. They choked. So I don't care. If the Yankees were to at least take three of these five games, or maybe four, because they had four of those games at Yankee Stadium and could only split. If they were able to take, to take at least three or four of them, I'd be singing a different song. I'd be calling the Yankees the best team in baseball by far. And, and let me let me backtrack a little because I did make a Facebook post a few weeks ago saying that the Astros were the best team in baseball and it's not close. I, I think it's very close. I think the Yankees are right there, but they're just one step behind. But I do, yes, I, I do believe that the Astros are the best team. So again, my question to you, if you're asking me, well, RJ, why don't you think the Yankees are the best team? I, 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 I rebuttal that with why do you think they are? What have they done against the Astros? Why do you think it's going to be different this time? That's my question for anybody else out there. Um, and, I, and again, I'm not saying that they can't do it. They could very well do it. And it's it's 3-2 to two in the season. I get it. But I just I need to see more. I need to see more to be a little more comfortable with this Yankees team. So that's always going to be in the back of my mind while they're dominating the rest of the American League this season. I'm still going to be thinking, damn, they, they, they got to show more against the Astros, though. Damn, even if they sweep the, the Indians or the, the, the Guardians, <laughs> Fuck. this next upcoming series, it, it's going to be nice, cool, great, right? Just like they did with the A's, but like I still, now, going forward, uh, all I'm going to be thinking about right now is, is July 21st because that's the next time they play the Astros for a doubleheader. And, you know, the odds are, you know, they'll probably split that at best. Doubleheaders are tough. They're in Houston for both. So, so I got to see more, man, and it's unfortunate. But the rest of the season, I believe that's the only two games they play against them going forward before the postseason if they face them. So I got to say, for the remainder of this regular season, man, I don't even know if those two games will change much unless the Yankees really, again, comfortably win. But the rest of the regular season for me, it's just going to be having fun, enjoying it as long as they stay healthy and continue to do what they're doing. But I'm not going to be able to have that same magical feeling. Uh, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, it's going to be harder for me. It's going to be more difficult for me to buy in. I was so close. I was coming so close. Like inching closer and closer and closer and closer. I'll buy in. I'm so close. And then this Astros. Just these five Astros games happened. And I'm like. I'm sorry. It sent me back down if I'm being truthful. It did. It put me back down a bit. So one last time, my question for you, anybody out there who thinks the Yankees are the best team in baseball and it's not close, my question for you is, what's different this time? What's different for you to believe that they can beat the Astros in a playoff series? And if you give me a reasonable answer, I'll try to reason with you. But I, I really, I'm curious to know. So that's my question for you. Um, guys, that's it. That's all. That's my thoughts. Just a quick little uh, run through there of. of yeah, of, of the, the Yankees, the state of the Yankees, and my opinion on them going forward. So it'll be fun, but I, I'm just not going to be able to have that magical feeling that I was uh, getting to um, prior to those five games. Let's get to it. Let's get to our progress reports. Um, first, let's head to break, get back, wrap up the first portion of the show with the NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day. And then from there, we will get to our progress reports for... Uh, you know, being almost halfway through the year, three months in. All right. Be right back, guys. Stay with us. Hey, guys. So I've noticed that only a small portion of you who watch BD4 on YouTube are actually subscribed. So if you do enjoy this podcast and maybe you want to be notified when new episodes release, I'd consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. This way we can help the channel grow and 
you won't miss a single episode of BD4. Alright, let's get back to it. So, if you guys want to follow me on social media, be sure to do so right now. I'm on Facebook at RJ Carbone, and I'm also on Instagram at Rob J Carbone. Once again, if you want to find me on Facebook, that is RJ Carbone. Instagram at Rob J Carbone. So BD4 is on so many platforms to listen to. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud. You can listen to us on Spotify. You can find us on our sponsor, Anchor, and many other listening platforms as well, wherever you get your podcasts. But we are also available to watch on YouTube. So if you want to watch us on YouTube, go subscribe there. But if you prefer to listen to us, again, many, many, many listening platforms. Just be sure to subscribe, download, give us a rating, a review, comment, share the podcast, and all that fun stuff. This is BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Let's get to our NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day to wrap this first portion of the show up, and then we'll get right into our progress reports. All right, so for episode 386, our NYYNYK MMA question of the day. How many players hit at least 30 home runs on the 1998 New York Yankees? All right, how many players hit at least 30 home runs on the 1998 New York Yankees? All right, so let me know the answer. Uh, wherever you can reach me, if you get the answer correct, I'll give you a shout out in the next episode in front of all one of my followers. Um, and if you get it incorrect, I'll let you know what the answer is in the next show. Guys, appreciate you tuning in. Again, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on the many platforms. Download these episodes and give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We are currently a five-star podcast and would like to keep it that way. So go to Apple Podcasts and do so if you please. Um, and, and subscribe to us on YouTube and Spotify, which you can also watch the video format of the podcast there. All right, guys, so we're going to get into it. Uh, episode 386, going to get into the second half of the show, more like the second three quarters of the show. Um, where we're going to be, uh, this was, again, this was earlier today before this Astros game took place on June 30th. We went, we, uh, went out and handed... Uh, I don't know why I worded that so oddly. We handed out progress reports uh, for the three-month mark of the season. All right. So let's get to it, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right. So, yeah. 
Welcome to the second part of the show. The second portion of the show, as I just mentioned, was recorded earlier on Thursday. Earlier today, June 30th, Thursday. Um, and we're going to get into the uh, progress reports. We are now three months. That's crazy. Three months into the baseball season. Wow. And um, yeah, man, let's let's discuss it. Because we've got some different um, storylines going on right now. A lot of a lot of good, uh, a couple bad, as as we've obviously been aware of. Um, but let's discuss it. So uh, again, if you are new here and you haven't seen these episodes where I do these progress reports, disclaimer. All right, so I don't get ripped. The way I grade, so we we go throughout the entire. Pretty much the entire roster. We well, we go, we grade each individual position player. Then we give a grade to um, the starting rotation as a whole, the bullpen as a whole, and the Yankee team as a whole. All right, and these grades are based off their performance through the first three months. All right, and this is what I'm about to say next is very important, so I don't get ripped. Um, each of these grades is based off that player's, that individual player's own expectation. Okay, so for instance, if player one gets an A minus and player two gets a B minus, that doesn't exactly mean that player one is the better player this season than player two. It just means player one has played up to his expectation more than player two has. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. That's the best way I can put it. So each grade is based off that player's own expectation. So everybody's on a different scale. Not everybody's on the same scale. All right, so don't rip me if you see, you know, I don't know. Um, you'll see as we go. You'll see some of the grades are different because it's on a different scale. All right, so it's it's not not everybody is on that same skill. So if you know if if one player has you know if, if, if Trevino has an A minus, that doesn't mean he's like on judges tier because you know, and that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with Jose Trevino. We'll start behind the plate. And I think we'll work our way around the diamond. I think that's probably the best way to do it. So, yeah, man. Jose Trevino. Wow. Um, one second here. He's he's just been so much better than what I expected and what probably most of us have, have expected uh, this season. I mean, you picked him up last minute. Literally last minute. I think it was April 3rd, 4th, 2nd, something like that. Just a couple of days before opening day. And um, I didn't even think he was going to be in the uh, on the 25 or the 26 now. I thought it was going to be Rortvid. We haven't even seen this Rortvid kid. Rortvid, Rortvid was part of that Donaldson deal. And uh, I thought it was going to be him and Higgy kind of platooning. Ends up being Higgy and Trevino. And then slowly but surely it's becoming just primarily Trevino. And it's been like that because he's been their best catcher. And I don't think anybody could have expected that. So that's why Jose Trevino gets the A- minus is because he's playing well, well, well above expectations. He's batting 271 this season, which is obviously much better than expected. Uh, 321 on base percentage, uh, 450 slugging percentage, and 771 OPS. He's got three doubles, one triple, six home runs, 24 RBIs, nine walks, 20 strikeouts, one stolen base, 19 runs scored, 58 total bases, 50 games played so far of the 76. Yeah, just, I mean, the catching is great. He's a great backstop. Um, I think the numbers back that up. He's, uh, in particular, it's not just the catching, but it's the framing. He's stealing a lot of strikes. 
Um, and, and that's, that's one thing that I think the analytics also say he's best in the business at. Um, so he's very top notch, obviously behind the dish calls a great game too. He works very well with the pitching staff. The starting rotation loves him. Garrett Cole loves him. Uh, the bullpen works great with him. He's got a great chemistry with Clay Holmes. Um, and of course, like I said, the hitting that that's been the bonus this season. Um, he's picking up he hits consistently, singles up the middle, um, left field, timely hits. He's had a few magical moments already. Obviously, uh, you know the walk off on his father's birthday, um, the Father's Day moment. I mean, he's had some great one of a kind moments, and that kind of ties into where I'm going to go next with this, how Jose Trevino, a little bit, he, he reminds me of, of, um, God, uh, Gio Urshela, because Gio Urshela kind of had that magic when he first came with the Yankees, right? Wasn't expected to start, wasn't expected to make the team, uh, thrived in spring training, made the team last minute, and was expected just like Jose to be a defensive player at best. And he was, but then the bats started to come around and he started hitting and he started also having magical clutch moments. And um, it seems like Brian Cashman is pretty good at finding those diamond in a rough type players. And it looks like Jose Trevino is, is another one of those guys. So Jose Trevino most definitely gets an A minus from me. Um, let's go to first base. Um, and talk about Anthony Rizzo because Anthony Rizzo has had a good solid season. Um, I gave Anthony Rizzo through the first three months of the year a B plus. Um, he's batting 220, 333 on base percentage, a 492 slugging percentage, <clears throat> excuse me, and an 825 OPS. 10 doubles, one triple, 20 home runs, which is Still shocking to me. He's a home run guy, but he's not like a power hitter, power hitter. Like this is a guy who's, you know, gotten about 25 to 30 per year in his prime. He's already got 20. Uh, 50 RBIs, 35 walks, 54 strikeouts, 6 stolen bases, 44 runs, 130 total bases, and I'm going to take a drink. Um... 74 games played. He's been great. He's playing a great first base, first and foremost. You know, the scoops, the stretches he's got to make. He's making plays in foul territory. Just being very efficient over there in in, in, uh, in the cold corner. <clears throat> Saving IKF's ass all, all the time. Um, but no, in all seriousness, he's been great defensively. That's where you got to first notice the difference between him and Voigt. Um no shot to Voight, because Voight was a great bat. But Rizzo has been great at the plate. He's a run-producing machine, right? He's got the RBIs. He's got the home runs. He's got the plate discipline with a ton of walks. He's a professional hitter. And he's going to work the count. Even if he gets out, he'll work the pitch count up. Um, again, we all saw that 16 pitch at bat. Um, was it against Houston? Or was it the first game against the A's? Might have been the final Houston game. I don't remember. But he had the 16-pitch walk, right? I think it was the final game in, against Houston. Um, but yeah, he's just a pro hitter. He knows how to work the count. He's a clutch hitter. He's already had many big moments for the Yankees so far this year. Um, sure, the, the batting average is not where you want it to be. It's pretty low. Um, but he has hit well outside of May, right? He was 273 in April. Then he went down to 167 in May. Now, the June batting average is only 231, but, I mean, that doesn't really describe how he's hit the entire month because up to June 20th, up to June 20th, he was batting 220. Uh, let me say that again. Up to June 20th, he was batting 299 for the entire month. But then he went on that, uh, that 0 for 16 slide. So that obviously, you know, decrease the numbers a bit, but he has, he has been hitting better than the average shows in my opinion. Um, and I don't expect him to sit at 220. I think he'll end the season somewhere in the two forties, but 
again, that's not what I'm looking at. If you can produce runs and do other things besides batting average um, in today's game, that that's fine, right? And he's he's done that. He's been very productive at the plate from the left side. And you know, he's obviously a guy who knows how to get on base with the walks, with the hit-by-pitches. And he, too, like Trevino, is a great clubhouse guy to have on the roster. Um He's a veteran with experience, and he's one of the more liked guys in baseball, right? That, that's something everybody knows. So Anthony Rizzo, for sure, I have to give him a, um, a B-plus grade. I think he's been good, um, very good, and, and I, I think he'll continue to be good. Let's, um, let's go to second base. We'll start with Gleyber Torres who I also think is having a good year. Glaber is batting uh, 247. Uh, and by the way, Glaber gets a B for me. He gets a B grade. He's batting 247, 299 on base, um, 481 slugging, though, and a 780 OPS. 13 doubles, 1 triple, 13 home runs, 32 RBIs, 16 walks, 47 strikeouts. Um... And then four stolen bases, 33 runs scored, and 111 total bases through 68 uh, games played. Now, the numbers on the screen, if you're watching the podcast, are, I think I put them, I think that's a little off. But, um, no, he's had a strong bounce back season. Uh, the power is there. Again, I think that's the big return is he's starting to crush fastballs again. And uh, you're noticing the extra base hits are up. Um, his approach is much better. He still gets very, um, you know, he can get unfocused, if that's even a word, at times. You know, kind of fall off balance. And then after his swing, you'll see his momentum push him towards the dugout. Hence the, the batting average kind of not really being any different than it has been in the past couple of years. You know, he'll still have those stretches where he's putting up some lazy first pitch pop-ups. Chasing out of the zone, um, you know, just weak contact at bats. Doesn't walk much still because of that inconsistent approach. But when he focuses in and brings that right center field mentality, Glaber Torres can get as hot as anybody. And this season, he's been a completely different player at the plate. You know, he's he's not. I don't know that he's going to be the guy he was when he first came up and, and bats. I, I thought he could be like a near 300 hitter. I don't know about that. But if he can bat them 260, hit them 25 to 30 homers, which I think he's on pace to do, that's going to be great. And let's remember, he's also a completely different player at second base. Gleyber Torres has done a really nice job at second this season. Switching back from shortstop to second has been a blessing. Uh, he was pretty bad over there at shortstop um but this year at second base he's one of the team leaders in defensive run saved over there he might be amongst the league leaders in defensive run saved at second base um and the eye test kind of matches it too you know if you watch him he's done a pretty smooth job he's making good plays does a nice job making tags and um like at the plate he'll get lazy at second occasionally too um but for the most part Aside from a couple of moments of unfocus, um, he, he's been solid all around. So, Glaber Torres, I think it's a B for me. I think that's a pretty fair grade. Um, let's go to DJ LeMayu. Speaking of second baseman, DJ LeMayu. Um, I gave him a B-. minus. Um, he's batting 262 with a 360 on base percentage, 402 slugging, 762 OPS, 13 doubles, 7 home runs, 31 RBIs, 35 walks, um, 35 strikeouts, 2 stolen bases, 41 runs, and 98 total bases through 67 games played. DJ, 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 DJ. Um, I, You know, he's not the same player. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and act like he's been the same player this season than he was when he first came to the Yankees. Not the same hitter, at least. You know, I was hoping he would still be able to be somewhere in the middle between last season and two and three years ago. You know, someone who could bat 290 with maybe an OPS 750 to 800 or something like that. 
he's not doing that. He's still having a very so-so offensive year. You know, right? So far, not much. Um, I feel like he's hitting a lot more. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, a lot more ground balls. I also feel like he's not as aggressive on fastballs in the zone, which he used to crush every time. Um, like a slap a line drive to right field. He's still an okay hitter. He'll have his stretches, and he's on a, a decent stretch right now. Right, The numbers are not terrible. They're just more average. Um, and, and I still love that he's continuing to make great contact. And with that, the walks are even up this season. So that's an excellent ratio to have, a 35 to 35K to walk. And his defense, of course. That's that's one thing that also goes overlooked because he's not been the same offensively is we do forget sometimes how valuable it is to have a guy like that. Boone can be flexible with lineups because of LeMahieu's ability to play all three, position, or three positions in the infield, right? He plays each of those positions very well, too. He's an above-average first baseman, in my opinion. He's a very good second baseman. And he's an excellent third baseman. In my, in my opinion, that's actually been his best position this year. Um, I have to dig into the numbers if you're into that. But, like, the eye test tells me he's actually been really sharp at third base. Um, but that's why his grade is above a C. Is I think what saved him from, from getting a C plus as opposed to a B minus is... The, the, the ability to play different positions and do them all very well, right? Because you could play three different positions, but to do them all at an above average or better clip, that's a different story. And DJ could do that. And I think he's been a huge reason as to why the Yankee defense overall has been much, much cleaner, more efficient, sharper um, this season. So... DJ, my neck. even though he has not been, again, what he once was, he's not having the greatest of seasons. I think a, a B- minus is a fair grade just because he's still okay at the plate and he's very good defensively. Um, let's go on to the left side of the infield, or the right side, I guess. Um, we'll start with IKF. I say a kind of falefa. I gave him a C, and it kind of hurt to do because I like him. Um, he's batting 263 with a 316 on base percentage, 311 slugging, and a 627 OPS. 11 doubles, uh, no home runs, 18 RBIs, 16 walks, and 37 strikeouts. Um, 11 stolen bases. 36 runs and 71 total bases through 67 games played. I like IKF. I think IKF is okay. I think he's an okay hitter. I don't think he's a very good hitter, but I don't think he's a bad hitter. Like the nerds who never play baseball beyond middle school will probably tell you. I just think he's a so-so hitter. And I think... You know, he'll have a fair amount of, of single streaks, spread some doubles in there, double down the line. He'll have some good streaks, right? Like at the end of April, entering May, there was like a streak of five consecutive series where IKF was hitting well. He also had a, he had a down May, but he had a good stretch mid to late May for about three or so series against the White Sox and Orioles. Um, he did struggle most of May, but then he's bounced back. He had a really, he hit well. He really did. He, he hit very well. For most of June, um, outside of maybe one bad series, two tops, he had a pretty good June with the bat. So he makes contact and he hits the ball well with runners in scoring position, which I think is something a lot of people do forget with IKF because he's not the greatest hitter. He does come through a lot with men on base. He's batting 313 with runners in scoring position across 48 at bats. Um, he's two for four with the bases loaded this season. He actually reminds me a little bit, I might have said this before, don't remember, of Ronald Torres. You know, not known as a, you know, power guy, not, not a power hitter, but is a decent contact hitter who can come through in those moments. Got a little bit of that in him. Um, yeah, he, he, the thing is he just has zero power. Right? Uh, will this guy ever hit a home run? I I don't know, man. You, you'd think in Yankee Stadium, 
not just because of the short porch, but like protection around him in the lineup that he'll get a few fastball, a few more fastballs, and he'll have to run into a few on accident. But shit, nothing yet. We we're still at zero. Nothing yet. Um, but yeah, the the offense has been okay. Um, he just he he must must. And this is this is a necessity that IKF gets better at shortstop. Um, he's not terrible, but he's definitely not that good. Uh, he he's he was advertised as this Gold Glove caliber infielder. That was kind of the reason we traded for him. We needed to sh- to sh- uh, to shore up the shortstop spot. But I would say he's been nothing short of average, mediocre out there at short. You know, nothing terrible, but nothing great. Uh, official scorers have even been pretty nice to him too, um, ruling a few, you know, plays as hits that were supposed to and should have been errors. Uh, and on both ends, actually, he's he's gotten some favoritism, but. Yeah, he, he's got to be a little better. Uh, I, I, I don't expect much offensively, but exactly what we're getting, which is fine. Um, defensively, he's he's he can't be doing that. You know, if, if you're going to be a, you know, a bottom of the order bat, at least be above average at shortstop for us. And I don't believe IKF has been above average at short. I think he's been a little worse. Um... Let's go to third base. Let's let's go to our guy, Josh Donaldson. Um, Josh Donaldson, I I gave him a C as well. Um, he's batting two thirty this season, a three twenty five on base percentage, a three eighty eight slugging percentage, a seven thirteen OPS. He's got fifteen doubles, six home runs, twenty two RBIs, twenty eight walks, sixty one strikeouts, a stolen base, twenty two runs, eighty one total bases. And that's across 58 games played. Um, he's not exactly being as productive as I hoped, Josh Donaldson. Uh, the power is not really there. Like, the results. Um, I know he's an ex velo guy. He hits a lot of line drives. But, like, the doubles are nice to see. He's got 15 doubles. But... The six home runs, six home runs is pretty low. The sub 400 slugging percentage is a shock to me. I mean, this guy's, what was he, what was it? Three, 388. He's slugging 388. And he's also striking out a lot more than I expected. 25% K rate so far this season, which is a little, yeah, it's like 5% higher than I was hoping for. He's had some clutch moments, though, for sure. A couple walk-offs, the sack flies, some timely walks. Um, and he does play an excellent third base. But we have to start seeing more. We have to start seeing more offensively. He has to give them a little more than that. I feel like, excuse me, every time I look up in a Donaldson at bat, it's two strikes. Or if it's not, it's a quick pop-up. Um, it, it, he likes to get under the ball. And try to elevate it, which probably leads to some of those pop-ups. And to his credit, he does hit it hard when he's going. But he's just not going enough. You know? Um, uh, so, he needs to... He, lately, he's been a little better with the bat. So, that's good. Um, but I'm still waiting for it. I'm still waiting to to get what we were expecting. And again, it was nothing crazy. Bat me 250 with some power. That's fine. Hasn't done that. I do love the edge, right? I love the guy who stirs up shit. He's already stirred up shit a few times this year. Um, you know, you all know I love the antagonist character on the Yankees. Every every Yankees team has had one. Uh, every successful Yankees team has had one. That but that that just can't be his only pro, right? The Yankees are not paying twenty five million dollars to Donaldson this season, next season, for him to be uh, all about defense and energy. <laughs> it's gotta be, it's gotta be a little more than that. So Josh Donaldson, some good moments, some bad moments, still would like a little more good. So I, I gave him a C. I think a C is a pretty fair grade for a player like, um, like the veteran third baseman Josh Donaldson. Let me take a sip of water. Um, 
Um, <clears throat> hopefully he gets hot. It would be nice. I don't know his numbers against the Astros, but I do know that he kills the Boston Red Sox. Um, so maybe, you know, that'll be the series that wakes him up. Um, and I think that series comes, yeah, I think it's coming pretty soon. Let's talk about, uh, let's go to the outfield. Uh, and let's start with our new right fielder. Uh, the Bronx favorite, Joey Gallo. Um, <laughs> yeah, how do you not give him an F? Uh, I hate to do that. I do. Because I know he's a nice guy. And he, he seems like he wants to make it work here. But man, has he failed. He's batting 167. Um, the on base is 276. A 333 slugging, 609 OPS, four doubles, nine home runs, 18 RBIs, um, 28 walks, 84 Ks, one stolen base, 28 or 24 runs, and 62 total uh, total bases in 62 games. Jesus, that means 62 total bases in 62 games means he's averaging one single per game. That is egregious for a power hitter. I mean, shit. Yeah, I mean, he's slugging 333. He's only got 18 RBIs. Yeah. I mean, I was never a big fan fan of this trade to begin with. Most of you, I feel like, were on board with it. But now you're starting to switch stances. I was never for it. You know? He's not even reaching his usual standards. Which, again, even then... I don't love like even if he was hitting 215 and on pace to slug 30 home runs like I still would not love that I'd be I wouldn't give him an F but I still wouldn't be for that because I feel like in this Yankee lineup you have enough of that you don't need a guy like that um, so I mean all you got to do you watch this guy swing he refuses to change his approach literally refuses um, to change his approach at all. All you got to do is throw him a fastball above the letters and he's not going to be able to hit it. All you got to do is throw him something away and he's not going to be able to hit it because he's trying to pull off everything. It's not working. Yankees fans have, have pretty much turned on him. He's getting booed constantly. He strikes out at least twice every night. Um, I mean, his average is now... 167, meaning he could go one for six in a ball game, and that would probably raise his average. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, I mean, he yeah, it's it's not working out. At least he plays a decent right field. I mean, is that the best we got? But it's unfortunately it didn't work out. It did not work out with Gallo, so he must go by July 31st, preferably before July 31st. But. Uh, it's got to happen. It didn't work. It's got to happen. You can't have you can't have this. You just can't have this uh, on a team that's supposed to win a championship. Right now you're maybe getting away with it, right? Right. But you cannot expect to have this going forward and and, and you know, want to win a championship. It's not going to work. Joey Gallo has done nothing but flops since becoming Yankee, and I wish him the best, but you got to send him somewhere like I don't know. Somewhere shitty where it doesn't matter if you suck. Seattle, where he'll have better numbers and you know, play under less of a spotlight. And it doesn't matter if you do bad because they're going to lose no matter what. Oakland even. Like, just, just get him out. Oh, maybe he can be part of an Oakland deal and give us uh, Montes. <laughs> we would have to make a hell of a package there. Um, but um, no, I mean, it's, it's, time to, it's time to move on. It's been time to move on. From Gallo, it didn't work. Call it, a, call it a, call it a dud. Cashman's gonna have to admit failure on that one. Um, but you know, we're gonna go from an F to an A plus. And how could you not give Aaron Judge the A plus? I don't hand them out often, guys. I don't. I do not like doing it either. I almost didn't. But how could you not? Aaron Judge gets the A plus. He's batting two ninety this season. 365 on base percentage, 636 slugging percentage, um, an OPS of 
one dot oh oh one. <laughs> oh shit. Eleven doubles, twenty nine home runs for Christ's sake, fifty nine RBIs, thirty six walks, eighty two strikeouts, five stolen bases, sixty two runs, hundred eighty total bases, seventy four games played. Um, yeah, he he's been phenomenal. First and foremost, he's staying healthy. He's only missed two games, and I think it, it was just because of rest. Um, knock on wood. Jesus. Um, he's playing exceptional center field. I mean, exceptional center field. And he's doing so every single day. Every single day. Uh, I don't remember the last time he started in right field. I really don't. Um, is that a concern long term? Maybe. But again, you got two outfielders who could possibly, at least one of them could possibly get traded. So you can maybe make it make an acquisition there and slide Judge back to right field where he belongs. That would be the best scenario. Um, but of course, his his offense too. He's hitting, of course. Uh, he's on a 60-something homer pace still. I don't know that he'll get there. That's an incredibly hard number to reach. Uh, I think he's got a chance at 55 to break his rookie record. Um... He's hitting for more average this year. You know, he's hitting more, sorry, more for average this year because he's always been a good all-around hitter. But, you know, more and more it feels like this season he's able to settle for the singles in certain spots, right? Um, but, yeah, big home runs, big singles, some doubles in there. He's been very clutch. Three of the ten walk-offs this season have been from Aaron Judge, which is awesome. He's kind of changing that narrative from his first few seasons where he wasn't as clutch, it felt like. But yeah, Aaron Judge has been nothing short of uh, fantastic. And he's definitely the MVP right now. Uh, maybe even the best player in baseball, you can make that case. But I think it goes Aaron Judge in terms of this season's MVP. Aaron Judge, maybe Ramirez and Endeavors. Um, yeah, I... There's, there's nothing but positive things to say right now about Judge. There's nothing. He's done nothing bad this season. I mean, he's having a historic year. Um, and obviously the whole contract negotiations have not happened yet. Um, just settled with an arbitration deal. But the contract negotiations will have to wait to see what happens in the offseason for that. Um, Aaron Judge gets an A+. Plus. Uh, let's move on to Aaron Hicks. Um, not exactly an F like Gallo, but I, I D plus, I think would be the best, the more fair grade here. Um, batting 218, 338 on base percentage, 284 slugging, 622 on, uh, OPS, two doubles, one single, three home runs. 18 RBIs, 32 walks, and 54 strikeouts, 7 stolen bases, 24 runs scored, 56 total bases across 66 games played. Listen, he's had a much better month. Um, you know, that, that Houston home run maybe gave him some uh, immunity for a bit. He has a so-so on base percentage because he goes up there hunting for walks a lot but he's Aaron Hicks still not good the Yankees I believe still need an upgrade from him I still consider Hicks to be a, a decent fourth outfielder but he can't be in a major league starting lineup with a slugging percentage in the 200s man forget the 300s he's got a slugging percentage in the 200s you just can't do that, especially as an everyday player. He's played in 87% of their games. Even Isaiah Kiner Falefa is slugging more than him, I believe. Yeah, he is. How do you slug 284 and play in 66 games? That's disgusting. If the Yankees were not winning the division right now by miles, we'd be coming for Boone's head. Because this guy's still in the lineup every day. That's disgusting. Again, he's had a better June, but you cannot slug in the 200s and play as much as he has. How, how did they get away with that shit? 
That's crazy. I'm just now realizing how bad 280-something slugging is. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Um, I mean, he's played a good left field. I'll give him that. I think he's four defensive run saves in left field this season. The arm plays up. It seems like he's taking some better routes to the ball there. So left field might be his new spot, but still, he's got he's got to go. Still, I'm not in on him just because of a nice stretch uh, or a nice hit. I'm still not a Hicks guy. Um, I don't know who's going to take that contract, so you might have to keep him. You just relegate him to, again, a fourth outfielder role, and you make a deal getting Gallo out of here. I don't know. You got to do some shit. But Hicks, Hicks, long we've waited long enough. He, he's not. He is who he is, and it, it's just, you know, it's not gonna change. Um. So yeah, he he gets the D plus for me. Let's go to the last starter, the last starting position player on this list is DH slash outfielder Giancarlo Stanton who I gave a B plus. A B plus for Stanton, batting 244 with a 331 on base, 525 slugging, and an 856 OPS. Five doubles, 19 home runs, 52 RBIs, 30 walks, 70 strikeouts, 30 runs scored, and um, 116 total bases across 62 games played. Stanton's been mashing. He's been mashing home runs lately. When he gets a hold of them, it's a line drive shot, no doubt off the bat. And that's why he's here. He's here to hit home runs, folks. And he's done a very nice job of hitting home runs when he's healthy. Um, he's already got 19, and he did miss 10 games there, remember? So there's you could say he'd be right next to Judge if he didn't get hurt. He missed 10 games. There's a chance he could have hit four or five there. And he's sitting at 24, 25 homers. <laughs> shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, came back off the DL a little slow, but he's been hot lately. He has only six hits since I think June seventeenth. I read, but all of them have been home runs. <laughs> so, and he's also playing a decent right field. Um, and you all know my theory. I think they should play him in right field in the smaller ballpark, so we don't have to see him and his egregious range. Um, but he does a nice job in right when it's you know, in Yankee Stadium and smaller parks. Just keep him out of uh, the bigger parks. What was that debacle of a game he had? Was that in Minnesota? Jesus Christ. Was that the same start as Cole when Cole got banged around? I don't remember. But um, yeah, uh, Stanton has been good. I, I gave Stanton a B plus. Again, the power is why he's here. He's a home run machine. And it, it, it's so fun to watch him hit home runs. And seeing him get hot during that Houston series was amazing. And hopefully tonight against the Astros, he can do the same. And again, as you're listening to this show, that Astros game has already happened. Because I recorded this portion of the show early morning on Thursday, the 30th. So Stanton gets a B-plus for me. Let's go to the bench. Let's, let's start once again behind the plate. And we'll, we'll start off with Kyle Higashioka. Um, Higgy, I gave a C minus to. Betting 167 with 518 OPS, eight extra base hits, uh, 12 RBIs, six walks across 42 games played. Higgy has played decent defense behind the plate. Um, not as good as Trevino, in my opinion. And then hitting wise, he's gotten maybe somewhat better of late, right? But, I mean, not really. He had, like, a great Cubs game and then a couple other games after that where he had a hit and a homer. But that's really it. I mean, he hasn't had a great season. Um, <laughs> I, just, I don't know. There's not really much to say about Kyle Higashioka. He's okay. Not really that good. Um, been pretty bad at the plate and just decent behind the plate. <laughs> so he gets a C-. minus. Um Let's go to one of my favorites on this team uh, is Matt Carpenter, who's come here and mashed so far. He gets a B plus. Uh, Matt Carpenter does. He's batting 257 with an OPS of 1209. 
Uh, six homers, eight walks, and 13 RBIs across 17 games. He came here right off the bat. He started mashing, you know, um, and maybe he'll have some more luck in the future in this stadium with his retooled swing, you know, not, not as hot as he was when he first came over, but decent pinch hitter off the bench. And I, I've said this before. He reminds me of Raul Ibanez. And if he ended up getting some big postseason hits for them, I wouldn't be too shocked either. I can see a big playoff hit from Carpenter, big home run, and the Yankee Stadium just going wild, um, hitting one right into the short the short porch, the upper deck. Even like he's had some deep home runs too here, and he could also occasionally fill in defensively at many positions. So that that's a very uh, Valuable tool to have, as we've mentioned with LeMayhew, you know. And he's got the mustache, the alpha man, right? It's been fun. He's got the, he started the mustache trend, no batting gloves. Um, that hasn't exactly trended to the rest of the guys yet, but, but it's pretty cool to see somebody up there with no batting gloves. Like Jorge used to do that all the time. Um, but yeah, the guys love him. The guys love him. There's the whole... You know, they were tossing shit on the field the other day. The ground screw, I'm sure, loved that. Um, yeah, I, I like Carpenter. I think he's been good. Carpenter gets a B plus. Uh, last but not least among the position players is Marwin Gonzalez. Uh, Marwin, I gave him a B. 255 batting average, 730 OPS, 10 extra base hits, 9 RBIs, 6 walks across 40 games. He's done well, man. I gotta admit, I think Marvin has done pretty well. Now, he's not the automatic out that I thought he was, and that's the big difference for me. I always knew he was going to play good defense. He could do shortstop. He could do third base. He plays occasionally in the outfield, although I like him in the infield best. But he's actually been a lot more productive at the play than I thought he'd been. He would be. Um, at least lately, right? He played in 19 games he has played in 19 games this June, and he's hitting well above 300. So he's a sw he's a switch hitter too. He's a switch hitter, so he gives Boone the you know the flexibility there with matchups. But um, he's been hitting well lately. A couple of multi hit games in there recently, and yeah, I, I think Marvin Gonzalez has been solid. Let's uh. Let's go to the bullpen, which I gave the bullpen a, um, I gave him an A. The relieving core has been spectacular. 26 and 11 with a 2.73 ERA to lead baseball, I think. 27 saves, pitching 260 innings, racking up 264 Ks, 188 hits allowed, which is incredible. For the amount of innings in there, 260. Um, 101 walks, 13 hit batters, 111 whip, and a 200 batting average against. And that is in 76 games relieved. Yeah, they get an A. I mean, top to bottom, guys are doing their jobs. Clay Holmes has been the best reliever in baseball this season, uh, at least in the American League. I don't know what Josh Hader is doing this year in the NL. But um, Clay Holmes has been near perfect. Uh, Michael King has probably been their second best relief pitcher. He's been very sharp. Wandy Peralta has thrived in high leverage this season. He's doing a hell of a job. Left-hander out the pen. Uh, what's his name? Castro has had some good moments. Not the biggest fan of Castro, but if you use him in the right spots, I'm okay with it. And then other guys, just everybody else has stepped up, you know? J.P. Sears, prospect rookie, came up and made a big start the other day. That's actually how the rotation, who... I, I gave the rotation an A. The starting pitching has been also... Very phenomenal. Has Have they hit a bump lately? Yeah, maybe it's more fatigue. 
Who knows? Regression? Fatigue? I, we'll see. But so far, they get an A. They're 39, 3.05 ERA. 425 in the third innings pitched. 432 strikeouts. 351 hits allowed. Also incredible given the innings pitched of 425. 94 walks, 17 hit batters, um, 105 whip, and a 221 batting average against. 76 games started. They've been phenomenal, man. Again, up and down the rotation. Garrett Cole has pitched like an ace. Uh, Nestor Cortez has been good. Now, has he hit a bump? Sure. I don't know how long that's going to last. Hopefully, he can still be very good after this stretches over um but yeah i mean severino has been solid in his return season tyone has hit a bump lately but he yo he's been good montgomery has been very sharp the rotation definitely gets an a and last but not least the new york yankees as a team i'm giving them an a plus i am giving them an a plus they are 56 and 20 which is a win percentage of 737. They're playing 737 ball. They're first place in the American League East by 13 games. I think they have the best record in the majors by seven games. They have a plus 151 run differential. I think they ended last season in the 100s. <laughs> and they're on a current four game win streak which hopefully stretched to five um, tonight as I'm recording the Houston Astros game did not happen yet. And um, yeah, I mean, they, they, they've been nothing short of historic so far, right? I mean, they're, they're on pace to win. I don't know. It bounces between 115 and 120. So that's pretty good in my book. And as tough as I am on them, they continue to win. And they've shown that they've killed every narrative that's gotten in their way, right? Uh, it's just a hot start. That became, oh, well, they're only beating bad teams. Well, they showed that they can beat the good teams too. They beat the Twins. They beat the Rays a bunch. The Blue Jays a bunch. Uh, haven't played the Red Sox, but they did take two out of three on opening week. They uh, they split with the Houston Astros. And that's going to be the one team that might get in their way this year, man. I still have to see more. I still have to see more. That's the one team we're going to have to see. I, I want to see how their season series play out. Right now it's 2-2. Or again, as you're listening to this, it's it's 3-2. One of the teams is in the lead. But... Yeah, that, that, that's that's the team that can go right up there with them. Now, their record isn't as good as the Yankees, but I do think they're every bit as good, even even better. They could, they could be even better. Because what matters in the end is how you do in the playoffs, and I think the Astros will be right there in the playoffs. I think these two teams will meet, and it's going to go neck and neck. But, um, yeah, an A-plus so far for the Yankees. That's that's for sure. And that's it for, for the progress reports. So, yeah, man, we're going to go right back to the live portion of this show. All right, so let's switch to that. Hope you guys enjoy these progress reports, though. Um, if you want, I'll run through it one more time. Trevino, A-, minus, Rizzo, B+, plus, Glaber, B, DJ, B-, minus, IKF, C, Donaldson, C, Gallo, F, Judge, A+, plus, Hicks, D+, plus, Stanton, B+, plus, Higgy, C-, minus, Carpenter, B+, plus, Marwin, B, Bullpen, A, Rotation, A, Yankees as a team, A+. Plus. And again, guys, the way I graded them, uh, the way I graded the Yankees here, each individual was graded on a scale of their own expectation. Okay, so keep that in mind. Not everybody was graded on the same scale. But that's it for, for this portion of the show. Let's get back to the uh, portion where we recap and talk about the rest of this Astro series. All right, guys, let's do it.
All right, guys, that's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed the show. Um, again, don't kill me if you disagree. This is just my opinion. And again, my final take on the Yankees, man, it's just it's going to be hard to buy in 100%. Um, the Yankees, in my opinion, are, are they have a long way to go. Their lineup is still very hot and cold, hit or miss, strikeout, home run. It's still very much oriented. It's very much constructed around the, the power. And um, you can't go into a playoff series against the Astros with Joey Gallo on your team. I'm sorry. You just cannot. Uh, as we mentioned in the progress reports, it, it didn't work and, that, and it must end now. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this, the, the lineup has proved they can't hit great pitching. Um, they can't hit Houston Astros pitching. And um, that's that's really the only thing it comes down to. Um, not that I want to focus so much on the Astros to where we end up losing in the first round to some other team. But, like, that is the team that has that has been the thorn in their side. And it's been the one team that everybody needs to see the Yankees beat to buy in, right? That's not just the narrative. It's really, it's it's a true rational reason. To, to not be in on the Yankees yet to see them lose to the Astros and not exactly or just it's not just losing it's just the way they're playing against them it's hard to buy in right now all right and um we'll see you know their pitching has done a nice job containing the Astros lineup I will say that that's one positive but I don't know how much longer the starting pitching can be this elite and if it does regress, you, you need a lineup that's not so strikeout prone, not so reliant on home runs and doesn't have all these guys who hit below 250. I mean, Donaldson's got to start coming through more. Gallo sucks. Aaron Hicks don't care about the home run anymore in Houston uh, against Houston the first game. Sucks. Uh, three guys who are not producing for the Yankees. You could probably combine all their counting stats, and they'd still be lower than Judge is. <laughs> so it's bad um, with those three. We need some lineup tweaks. IKF isn't cutting it. Um, I mean, you could say you could make that case. You know, I know we kind of just talked decent about him, um, but that's that's four guys right there. That's half, almost half the lineup. Can't. You need big upgrades, and I'm saying big upgrades. No fucking bargain bin shopping by Cashman this time. I'm saying at the very worst, get a Benintendi, get an Ian Happ, get a Luis Castillo, get a Montas, Montas, I'm the fuck you, Frankie, whatever. <laughs> you know, make some big upgrades. Don't bullshit around this time. If you're legitimately trying to win a championship, you know what could possibly be Aaron Judge's last year. Go balls to the wall. Move your prospects. I don't care. Win me a championship because that is all that matters. All right? That's what New York wants. Guys, thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. All right. All right, ciao. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. It's the best way to make a podcast. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm.